Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you could join me today. I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for being here. Can you believe that January is almost over? I certainly can't. Time is really flying by. But anyway, I have made a few resolutions this year. I don't like that word, you know me, but I have made some resolutions or goals if you want to call them that. And one of them is that I'm going to try to work on my wellness and that means going out for walks and being more active. I think when you do that, time slows down a little bit. And the other thing that I'm going to try to do is to push myself a little bit. So I'm going to do more strength training, more balance work, more stretching. I'm also going to try to set a timer so I don't spend so many hours sitting down. My goal is to get up and do a few exercises every 30 minutes. And if you're physically able to do that, I strongly recommend it. I know some of you can't do that. But even if you just stand up, it's better than sitting down and you don't have to do anything else. Standing is better than sitting. Walking around is better than standing. Jogging is better than walking around and jumping is better than jogging. I know those are pretty hefty milestones, but if the only thing you can do is stand because you're physically unable to, that's perfectly fine. And if you can't stand, you can always do some upper body exercises while seated. And I know most of you already know this information, but it's nice to be reminded from time to time. But anyway, guys, one of my other goals is to work on Bag and Bee Box. I've been kind of neglecting that collection and it's the only bead subscription that I actually pay for, if you can believe that. Now, they do give me a small commission if you use the coupon code that I'm going to leave down in the description section of this video, but that's about it. I do have to pay for the beads and I don't mind because I actually love Bag and Bee Box. I really do. And the reason I didn't work on it last year is because I really didn't have that much time. There are only so many hours in the day. And besides this kind of work, I also have my Etsy store that I have to maintain. But it's all good guys, I'm not complaining. Life is good. I think out of all the things that I do, my YouTube channel is my favorite thing. And of course, having you here with me makes me very happy. So today we're gonna to be making that gorgeous necklace set that you saw in the introduction. And it's actually two necklaces, a short one and a longer one with a pendant. And when I opened up Bargain Bee Box and saw that moon pendant, I just couldn't resist it because it goes along with the theme of my company, Misty Moon Designs. And the other thing that I fell in love with were the Labradorite gemstones that were included in the bag. And if you're not familiar with Bargain Bee Box and you're wondering why I'm calling it a bag, it's because it does come in a bag. Maybe when I first launched it, it might have come in a box, but it comes in a bag now. But anyway, I'll leave a link down below so you can go to the website and check it out. And I'll also leave a coupon code and some other information in case you're interested. And if you don't have the beads, don't worry because I'll leave a list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. The only thing you might have trouble finding is the moon pendant, but you can make today's design with any kind of pendant. The other thing that I'm gonna leave down below are the tools that I'm gonna be using today. And as always, I'll leave some timestamps in case you wanna skip forward to any portion of the video. Video. And don't forget that I always model the pieces at the end of this video, so stick around for that. Now today we're going to start with a very quick unboxing of the January edition, and then we'll dive into the project right afterwards. Alright everybody, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And here we have Bargain Bee Box for the month of January. As you can see, it comes in a beautiful organza bag. It also comes with a little description, and on the back of this is a list of all the materials. As you can see, the name of this collection is Midnight Skies. Let me read you the description. It says, inspired by starry winter nights, this eclectic palette mixes a variety of blues with a subtle glow of Labradorite. And I absolutely love Labradorite. It says, electroplated agate, check glass stars, crystal accents, and bold glass barrel beads combined with a set of high quality stainless steel and pewter findings in classic celestial shapes to complete the collection. And it sounds like it's right up my alley. Of course, it goes along with the theme of this channel, Misty Moon Designs. And what a coincidence that it should be named this because I have not done an unboxing for Bargain Bee Box in months. So I'm very excited about this. And as you can see on the back is a list of all the materials and there are 18 items total. So that's quite a few. One of the nice things about Bargain Bee Box is that they give you pretty much everything you need to make any jewelry piece. The only thing they don't provide are the stringing materials like beading wire or memory wire, but I don't mind because they pretty much give you everything else. So let's go ahead and open it up. And it definitely looks celestial and the palette has a combination of blue colors and silver metals. Let me go ahead and organize these and we'll take a closer look. And look at this beautiful collection of beads. It's almost like Bargain Bee Box created this collection special for me. I absolutely love the celestial theme and that's one of the reasons why I named my company Misty Moon Designs. I've always been fascinated with anything celestial. And when I was a little kid, I loved anything to do with astronomy, the planets, space travel, astronauts. I was actually obsessed by it. And I think I still am to a certain extent. But anyway, guys, I thought we'd go over the glass beads and gemstones first. And we'll take a look at the metals in just a few moments. Look at these gorgeous moonstone beads. Oh my gosh, these are so beautiful. I love the beautiful flash inside these beads. These are 10 millimeters in size, as you can see, and the color is soft blue. These are absolutely gorgeous beads. 
I don't know if you've ever taken moonstone beads outside in the sun, but they look absolutely stunning in the sunlight. They really do. And I love these as well. These are Druzy agate beads. They're electroplated and they're round as you can see and they measure eight millimeters in size. I love Druzy beads. I don't know if you can see that beautiful Druzy effect. Not all of the beads have them, but quite a few of them do. And these are gorgeous as well. These are English cut crystals. They're six millimeters in size and the color is steel blue. And we get quite a few to work with, so that's really nice. I love the English cut because it really reflects a lot of light. And this is a nice collection of rondelles in different colors, as you can see. This color mix is called Deep Blue. And I'm seeing at least five or maybe six different colors in this mix. It's so pretty. These measure eight by six millimeters in size. So that's a really nice size to work with. And look at this, guys, we get Labradorite. Aren't these adorable? These are so pretty. They're very tiny. They're four millimeters in size, but this is a seven and a half inch strand. So that's really nice because you could literally take all of these and make a seven and a half inch bracelet. Really nice. And this one's even nicer. Look at this. Look at the gorgeous blue flashes in this Labradorite. Not all Labradorite is the same. A lot of Labradorite beads don't have the flash. So whenever you see the flash, that means they're pretty good quality. But anyway, this is a five inch strand and these chips are relatively big as well. The description doesn't say what size, but they're pretty big. So they're gonna look outstanding no matter what you do with them. And I love these little stars. These are absolutely adorable. Let me put them in this white dish so you can see the color. They're Czech pressed glass star beads and the color is crystal and steel blue luster. And they measure six millimeters in size and we get a total of 20 pieces. I love these. And these are a little bit bigger. They're definitely frosted. These are also pressed glass star beads and the color is crystal with AB. And these measure eight millimeters in size and we get a total of 10 pieces. I really love that AB finish. I don't know if you guys can see that. Sometimes the camera doesn't pick it up, but hopefully you can see it. It's really pretty. And these are so unusual looking. These definitely have a celestial theme, as you can see, and the hole is pretty big as well. They're called star pattern glass cylinder beads, and they measure 11.5 millimeters. I'm not sure if it's the length of the bead, but maybe it is. I don't know. Aren't these pretty, though? They're so gorgeous. I love these. As you can see, we get a total of five, and they definitely go along with the theme. I like that the holes are pretty big, too, because that means I can use leather cord if I want to. I'm not sure if that's what I'll do but that's an option. Let me go ahead and bring out the metals now. And here are the metals. And guys, I swear, Bargain Bee Box created this collection special for me. Just about all of these items are moon themed. So I'm gonna have to send them a little message and thank them. Of course, I'm just joking. But I'm so glad that I decided to do an unboxing for this collection. Let's take a look at this one. This one really stands out. How gorgeous is that? It's absolutely stunning. This is an antique silver brass crescent pendant with Labradorite oval. And there's the Labradorite right there. That's so pretty, guys. Oh my gosh. Let me show you the back. There's the back. And it has a bale already, so that's really nice. It measures 38 by 30 millimeters. This is an absolutely stunning piece. And then we have this one here. This one's really pretty as well. As you can see, it has a crescent moon. This one's called Curved Forest Moon Link, and it's plated with Thai fine silver. There's the back, and it's actually curved, so that's nice. It has two holes, so you could definitely make a bracelet with this one. I'm pretty sure that's how I'm gonna use it. And I'm already getting some good ideas using this component, it's really pretty. And then we have a bunch of these little ones here. These are very similar, they have a crescent moon and two holes, and there are four of them. They're very shiny, as you can see. These are stainless steel crescent moon cutout round links. They measure 12 millimeters. And they're the same on both sides, as you can see. And even though it says stainless steel, it's a very dark color. I've worked with stainless steel components before, but I've never seen them this dark. But the color of this metal actually matches the antique silver brass. So that's nice. And these are dark as well. And how cute are these? These are the faces of the moon. Although from a distance, I don't think I would guess that but I did read the description and it does say that they cut outs with moon faces. And since there are two of them, these would make really adorable earrings. 
I like these as well. These are really cute. These have a crescent moon and a star and they have two loops, one on each side. They're called round links with moon and star, which is very appropriate. I mean, what else would you call them? They measure 15.5 millimeters this way and 20 millimeters that way, including the loops. And we get a total of 10 pieces. And these are adorable as well. These are little star spaces. And then we put them in this dish. As you can see, they're pretty small. We get a total of 10 grams and these measure five millimeters in size. And this is what they look like threaded on something. They're drilled diagonally, so that's different. So you can have like a random effect depending on how you thread them. Or you could thread them all the same way. For example, these two are threaded the same way. These two in the middle. And so are these two. But if you thread them from opposite ends, they'll look like this. So that's interesting. I love these. They're really cute. And we get quite a few. Let me bring out the rest of the items. And here are the rest of the items. As you can see, we have toggle clasps, we have some bead caps, and we have some chain. Let's take a look at the chain. And this is a roller chain, and it's steel, and the lengths are three millimeters in size. And we get quite a bit, we get one meter. I love using roller chain because it really hangs nicely no matter what you do with it. I like it better than cable or twisted oval chain. It's really nice. Let's take a look at these bead caps. These are called star bead caps. I guess it's because they have the five points. They measure 7.5 millimeters and we get a total of 40. So that's quite a bit. And by the way, guys, Bargain Bee Box always lists whether the items are lead free, nickel free and cadmium free. And these definitely are. So that's nice to know. So anyway, I'm glad they gave us so many bead caps. Let's take a look at these toggles. And here they are. As you can see, they're square with rounded corners and the opening is round. They're nice and big too, and they look very functional. Sometimes toggle clasps aren't very reliable, but these look like they are. And we get a total of three. So that's nice. So anyway, I'm very happy with all of these items. Aren't they gorgeous? I absolutely love them. They're definitely my vibe. And of course, I love that they're a celestial theme. And I especially love the components that are moon themed. And of course, I love the Labradorite. So anyway, guys, I'm going to take a look at these beads now and see if I can come up with something. And I'll be right back with the project. If you'd like to learn more about the Bargain Bee Box, I'll leave a link down below to their website. But basically, it's a monthly subscription box that runs for $19.49 per month, and that includes free shipping in the USA. But one of the nicest things about this subscription is that you get an exclusive coupon for 30% off their sister site, Beadbox Bargains. But anyway, I'll leave a link down below to their website, and if you do decide to sign up, please don't forget to use coupon code MISTY to get $2 off on your first shipment. Okay, I'm back and I must admit it was a very difficult decision. I wanted to make some bracelets, but then I couldn't resist this beautiful pendant. So I've decided to make two necklaces. One smaller one at the collarbone and then a longer one. And of course they're going to coordinate so you could wear them together or separately. So let me go over the items with you. These are the bead caps that came in bag number two. And then we have this beautiful strand of English cut crystals and they came in bag number eight. The strand of Labradorite came in bag number 17. The Druzy Agate came in bag number 12, and this pendant came in bag number 14. And if you don't subscribe to Bargain Bee Box, like I said in the beginning, I will leave the list of materials down below in the description section of this video. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first necklace, and it'll be the longer necklace. I'm going to remove the beads from the strands and get organized a little bit. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I removed the beads from the strands, and I also poured some seed beads down. They're size 80 seed beads and they're in an antique silver color as you can see. I also have some other items here that we're going to use to finish off the necklace. We have some lobster claw clasps, we have some jump rings, they're 5 millimeters in size, and we have some clamshell covers for the crimp tubes that we're going to be using later on. I'm also going to be using some beetle on beading wire and this one is 7 strand. And the reason I'm using 7 strand is because it's the only one that I had. You can certainly use 49 strand if you want to. This one is 0 0.015 of an inch thick or 0.38 millimeters and it's in a silver color. And by the way guys, I need to thank all of you who left comments about my nails. I got some really nice compliments and I really do appreciate it. These are actually my real nails if you can believe it. It is gel nail polish but these are my real nails. And I don't know why they've started growing so well. It may be due to the supplements that I'm taking, I don't know. But I think the gel nail polish protects the nails as well. I needed to bring this up because a lot of you gave me some nice compliments. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using my magic rods and I carry these in my Etsy store. This is actually the 12 inch length. 
I do have others that are shorter but since I'm going to be making an 18 inch necklace I need this length and the nice thing about these rods if you're not familiar with them is that you can load pretty much anything on them they're made out of steel and they are resilient but they retain their shape and the other thing that's nice is that you can load large beads small beads bead caps chips and you can have them all up against each other but the best part about these rods is that they have these little stoppers that I pull in and so that helps to bring the beads in and I can get accurate measurements but anyway I'll leave a link down below in the description section of this video if you're interested so anyway let's go ahead and get started I'm only going to need one and I'm going to use it to build a strand let me remove my stopper now I don't know if I should start at the bottom of the necklace or at the top of the necklace I think I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm only going to load half the necklace on this rod and then I'll use the other rod to load the other half of the necklace now I know there are five inches worth of chips there so I think I'm going to load two and a half inches worth and instead of making you watch me load these chips which is pretty tedious I'm going to speed up the film okay so I've loaded some chips and now I'm going to measure it and it looks like I have two inches worth so I need to load a few more these are a bit challenging to load because they're so irregular like most chips are so that looks about two and a half inches and I really love how these look these are so pretty let me put my stopper on and by the way guys if you have the magic rods I know these stoppers are a little bit frustrating because they're so small the other thing that happens is that they get loose and that's why I give you a whole bunch of stoppers you can actually put two or three stoppers at each end when that happens or just get a new one so now I'm going to go ahead and load the druzies here let me remove the stopper and I'm going to start with a bead cap and I only have 10 druzies here because I did make some sketches and I wanted to have just five in a row on each side of the necklace and don't ask me why that's just what came to my mind of course you can have more than five if you want to in your design it's up to you so what do you think guys doesn't this look nice let me show you what it looks like with a pendant I think that looks adorable I really do I love that so now I'm going to load some seed beads to finish off the necklace and that's another reason I love using rods it's so easy to pick up the seed beads with the rods and then offload them in multiples onto beading wire if you've ever picked up seed beads with beading wire you'll know that it's very tedious this is so much quicker so let me keep loading these and I'll meet you back okay as you can see I loaded my rod and I want to measure it before I go any further let me go ahead and put the stopper on so I don't lose the beads I'm sliding the stoppers in so the beads are up against each other let's take a look it measures about eight and a quarter now I know I need an inch for the jump rings the clamshell covers and the clasp plus this bail is almost half an inch wide so if I were to make another rod like this one just the rods alone would equal 16 and a half inches so then if I add one inch to that that's 17 and a half plus the bail is half an inch so that's 18 inches I hope I'm doing the math right and the other thing that I'm not certain about are these chips I'm not sure if these are going to measure the same as this so that remains to be seen so what I'm going to do now is load a second rod just like this one I'll probably add a few more seed beads here so my necklace is a little bit longer and I'm just going to go ahead and do it off camera and I'll be right back okay I'm back as you can see I loaded both rods one of the nice things about the rods is that you can hold them up against each other like this so you don't need to count beads and they're especially handy when you're using seed beads now one thing I did want to mention guys when you're working with chips you should rotate them so that they settle into each other because they're so irregular that sometimes they shift so it's important that you do that so now that we have the rods loaded now we need to load the beads onto beading wire and I cut myself a piece of beading wire already this one's 22 inches long 
you need a little bit of extra space for the crimping. I could probably do with less than this, but I always give myself a little bit extra. I'm going to put a clip at this end so I don't lose the beads. You can use a bead stopper if you want to. And I will be starting at the top of the necklace. So I'm going to start at this end. Now to remove the stopper, you need to hold onto this side so you don't lose the beads and then slide the stopper off. And now I'm going to load the beads in multiple. So I'm grabbing several at a time, as you can see, and loading them directly onto my beading wire, just like that. That's one of the nice things about the rods. It holds the beads in alignment. So it makes it easy to thread them onto beading wire in multiples. So let me keep loading these beads and I'll meet you back. Okay, as you can see, I've loaded half the necklace and now I'm going to load the pendant and I'm simply going to thread it on like this. And that sits really nicely up against the chips, as you can see. So now I'm going to continue loading the rest of these beads and I'll meet you back. Okay, as you can see, I've loaded all the beads. And doesn't that look absolutely adorable? So anyway, now we need to crimp off the ends and finish it off. I have some crimp tubes here and these are size 2 by Beadalon. And here are two clamshell covers. So let me show you how easy this is. The first thing we're going to do is thread on one of these clamshell covers. And I'm going to go in from the bottom. Each one has a little hole at the bottom, as you can see. So that's what it looks like. And now I'm going to thread on a crimp tube. So now I'm going to squash that crimp tube. I'm going to use some chain nose pliers. You want to make sure you squash it really well. And that's what it looks like. And then I always test it before I put the clamshell cover on it. And guys, I'm pulling really hard here and it's not going to come off, okay? It's pretty secure. I know some of you are probably concerned about it, but I'm telling you this method is very reliable. Now I'm going to snip off the excess beading wire. Let me just give you a close-up. I'm not sure if you can see it that well. There's the crimp tube. And it's going to go inside the clamshell, just like that. So now I'm going to close it using these pliers. You can use any pliers. Just make sure you don't dent the metal. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. And now I'm going to move all the beads down. And it's critical, guys, that you make sure that those chip beads are up against each other. Okay. Like I said, you need to spin them around to make sure they settle into each other. So that looks pretty good. So now we're going to thread on this clamshell, but what I'm going to do is open it up a little bit. Let me just use some pliers. And the reason I want to open it up a little bit is to make it easier for me to squash that crimp tube. Now you don't want to open it up too much, okay, because it might weaken the metal. So now I'm going to thread it onto my beading wire. And then the crimp tube. Bring it down. As you can see, it's inside the clamshell. Now it's not going to be easy, I'm not going to lie to you, because you have to reach in there. But it's a lot easier if you open up that clamshell. So I'm going to reach in here, and now I'm going to pull that beading wire and push that crimp tube down, and then go ahead and squash it. Make sure you squash it really well. 
and that should be good enough. Let's test it. That looks good. So now I'm going to snip off the excess beading wire and close up my clamshell. Just like that. Super easy and it gives you a nice professional finished look. So now we're going to attach the clasp. Here's my clasp and here are two jump rings. And we're just going to attach it to the loop of the clamshell cover. Like that. And now the lobster claw clasp. Close up the jump ring. Make sure your jump ring has no gap, guys, because the loop of the clamshell is pretty thin and it could slide through the gap if there's a gap. So you want to make sure you close your jump rings really well. Let's go ahead and open up this one now. And this necklace is so gorgeous with the lavender dried. I really love it. Tell me that's not adorable. I think it's really cute. So now we're going to move on to the second necklace. Let me pull out the beads. Here are the beads I'm going to be using. As you can see, I have three of the Druzy agates and I am going to put bead caps on each one. And I do want to use these gorgeous crystals. And I'll probably add some seed beads at the top of the necklace to finish it off. So what I'm going to do now is load two rods and I'm going to do it off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I've loaded three rods. And by the way, I did use the nine inch rods for this one. Since the necklace was so short, I thought I would use the shorter rods. This is for the focal part of the necklace. As you can see, I have seed beads in between each of these crystals. Now, I didn't put any seed beads in the middle there because I think having the bead caps is enough. And I know it's difficult to tell, but once you see the whole thing loaded on beading wire, you'll see what I'm talking about. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And since you've already seen that process, I'm going to do it off camera and I'll be right back. And here's the shorter necklace. I absolutely adore this one. I can see myself wearing this one a lot. It's actually my style. I like shorter necklaces. But anyway, guys, as you can see, I didn't put seed beads down there because of the bead caps, like I mentioned before. I think the bead caps are enough down there. And the other reason I didn't put them down there is because I didn't want the Druzy agate beads to be too far apart. But anyway, this necklace measures about 16 and a half inches. And I used pretty much every single one of the crystals except for one. So if you wanted something longer, you'd have to add some seed beads at the top of the necklace by the clasp. Or you could add more juicy agate beads if you wanted to. But anyway, I'm pretty happy with this one. So let me go ahead and get the other necklace and I'll show you what they look like together. Well, here are both necklaces and tell me that's not adorable. I absolutely love the combination of beads. I think Bargain Bee Bucks did a wonderful job this month of curating the beads. When you have nice beads like that, it's easy to get inspiration. But anyway, I love making two separate necklaces because like I said before, you have the option of wearing one or the other or both. So anyway, guys, as always, I would love to put these necklaces on and show you what they look like. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back. Well, what do you think of this necklace set? Isn't it gorgeous? I love the moon pendant, I really do. Now, like you saw in the video, I made an 18 inch necklace, but I actually added an extended chain. I didn't show that in the tutorial, but I did add it because I felt like I needed a little bit of a longer length. So this necklace is actually 19 inches long on me right now. And if you don't know how to add extended chains, maybe I can do that in the next tutorial. I can show you how to do that. I know many of you already know how to do that. But anyway, guys, I'd be interested to hear which one you like the best and whether you'd wear them together or separately. 
I'm leaning towards just wearing one, the one with a pendant, but that's the beauty about having a set. I prefer having two separate necklaces instead of a double strand necklace because that way you can dress up or dress down depending on the occasion. All right, everybody, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.